Hey y'all, okay, so this is gonna be mine and hubby's first cooking video with y'all, and um, I hope y'all enjoy it. So, um, we both enjoy different aspects of cooking, and hubby here is really a good cook. So, tonight for supper, we are going to be having some cube steak and squash casserole, which is a recipe your mother yeah. sent to us. And, um, and it's also squash that we saved from last year. Yeah, it's squash I came from the garden mm -hmm. last year. So, anyway, it, it's going to be utilized and so good. So, anyway, um, and then some string beans, which are also um, ones that I put up and canned last yeah. year. Yeah have so much better texture and taste to them. Yeah. Um, so anyway, but those string beans, um, we actually picked up from the farmer's market last year. Yeah, we didn't um, grow those. We didn't grow any beans last year. So this is our first go at the beans. But, um, you know, even though we do uh, garden some here, we do still like to support our local farmer's market and local farmers as well around our area. So um, anyway, so squash casserole, cube steak, green beans, and I am going to be making some homemade biscuits. That's pretty good. Mm, yeah, and uh, a slice of tomato yep. that we grew last year. And uh, we're gonna try it out because I heard somewhere that you can actually freeze a whole tomato. And um, I put one in the freezer last year I think we put up just a couple just to test it out yeah. and see how it was gonna do all right guys if y'all are anything like me I love good biscuits or good bread um I guess that comes from my childhood my grandfather owned a bakery um here in Columbia South Carolina so um I got to work at the bakery a lot whenever I was younger. That was way before we had all the labor laws. So, um, yeah. And um, so I'm gonna make us up some biscuits and if y'all um, wanna try these, they are really, really good. So the first thing you need to do, set your oven on 450. Ours is still warming up right now. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and you make them in a cast iron pan. Um, you can use like a, about a 10 inch size cast iron. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this pan in the oven so it will be heating up. So we're gonna do that. And anytime your uh, cast iron gets hot, you wanna make sure you got a good oven mitt. Um, I got burnt really bad um, a couple months ago getting the cast iron out of the oven and what had happened uh the oven mitt got some water i must have sat it on a spot on the counter that had some a wet spot some water or something from the sink and didn't realize it and so whenever i pulled the cast iron out of the oven man i'll tell you what that heat and steam went straight through that oven mitt so make sure you got a good set of oven mitts anytime you are working with hot cast iron but um, I found a good uh, way to cure that as well. Um, we got a potato out of our pantry and um, shredded it up, made a poultice out of the shredded potato and put it on the burn, took the sting out. There was no blistering or anything. That worked. That was the first time I've ever tried that. All right, so for this recipe, you're gonna need two cups of self-rising flour. And Adley flour is actually um, here in Columbia, South Carolina. So I'm gonna measure, and it has to be sifted. So. It's not working. I'm short. And standing on your tippy toes trying to measure out something is just not going to work. <laughs> ah, 
I'm good at making messes. That's okay, because I'm gonna need it. So, we get this sifted in here. I think we're using Nana's old sifter. Yeah. It's got some miles and years on we it. We have a new one, but for some reason, I just tend to grab this one. It still works, mm -hmm. as old as it is. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, um, grab some butter, and we're gonna cut maybe a little bit less than a half a stick. And um, I like kind of cutting it up in smaller pieces. Um, it's easier to mix in. And get it mushed in that flour really good. I tend to find if I get them in like little square sizes or little rectangular sizes, um, tends to do better to get it in that flour really good. So we're gonna throw this in here and you wanna do this and make sure you mix your butter in um, before you add anything else in it. So. I'm just gonna go in, and y'all see what I'm doing. I'm just mushing up that butter into the flour. Make sure you mush it up. So I'm just gonna fill around for all my pieces until I get it all in there good. And this takes just a little while. It's kind of a process, but it is well worth it. Sorry, I was holding the camera way up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that. You trying to say I'm short? Um, this is, I'm sorry, y'all. This is cream cheese, so I'm going to use about a fourth um, of the cream cheese. I'm going to do it the same way as the butter. I'm going to cut it up because it's just easier to get it in there. So we're going to get this in here. And it's kind of crazy whenever I'm, I'm cooking something. I kind of tend to look at it and I'm like, mm, does that need a little bit more of this, a little bit more of that? So, you know, yeah, um, I, I do go by measurements, but I also, you know, get to a point sometimes where I'm like, I'm going to add this or add that. And, um, you know, even like with recipes and stuff like that that I follow, um, a lot of times I like to add my own little touch to it. Um, a lady that I used to work with um, really turned me on to uh, herbs and spices. Um, never really used them, you know, younger whenever I would cook. And um, she really turned me on to that. Now I really love using um, garlic and parsley and um, bay leaves and stuff like that in your food. It gives it so, such a good flavor and um, just a different taste. Yeah. It adds a lot more to it. Yeah. So, all, all right, right, I'm gonna wash my hands off. All right, y'all, so a tr I, I was gonna let y'all in on a secret here with these biscuits. There is a trick that we've learned because most of the time, most people don't keep buttermilk in the refrigerator. And even if you buy a little small container, it usually, if you use it one time and then it goes out of date and you're just wasting buttermilk. So there is a trick. You can take milk and put a, it calls for a cup of milk or a cup of buttermilk, excuse me. And what you can do is take a cup of regular milk and put like two to two tablespoons in it. Um, oh. Usually just about a, a splash or um Maybe a cap full. Yeah, like a cap full. Just a couple of splashes. Of, of vinegar, white vinegar, and you can put it in there and sit it in the refrigerator and it will actually curdle the milk up and turn it into buttermilk. So it's a good way to be able to always have, if a recipe calls for buttermilk or something like that, you don't have to run out and buy a whole bottle of buttermilk and have it. Yeah, um, it gets kind of expensive if you're just doing that for, for one thing. <clears throat> Um, and then your buttermilk sits in the refrigerator and tends to go bad because um, you're only using it for one specific recipe. So, um, but if you do do the milk that way, um, the best thing to do is do that first. 
because you want to stick it in the refrigerator so it, the milk will be curling um, while you're getting everything else ready. So that, if you use the regular milk with the vinegar to make your own type of buttermilk for this recipe, make sure you use that, do that as your first step. Yeah, and that's stick it in the fridge and uh, you'll see it. The milk will start clumping up. And uh, I know it sounds kind of gross, but um, it's not, you can't taste the vinegar at all. We have made these biscuits like that before. Um, we just happened to have some buttermilk in the fridge um, that we had used for something else. And luckily it has not gone bad on us before we could use it again. Yeah. So, all right. So I do have the buttermilk here. So we're at a cup of um, buttermilk and all my butter and cream cheese is in the biscuit um, it, uh, flour mix. So, and it's gonna be a little soupy and sticky and it's okay. It's supposed to be like that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take some of my butter. You can't never have enough butter. No, not for these biscuits either. Oh my gosh. And if y'all wanna add a little bit more butter to it or just a little bit more sour cream, yeah, definitely uh, do it to your liking. And um, I'm gonna grab a little spatula so I can get the edges good. They're really easy to make. Yeah, they're not hard at all. You know, um, it seems like anytime you make anything bread-wise or biscuit-wise homemade, you think, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have just this huge mess all over my counter and have to clean up. This is an easy cleanup, y'all. So don't be scared of it. Don't, uh, don't worry about throwing the flour on the counter. Get it on your hands a little bit, and what you're gonna do, you're gonna take just a ball, roll it around, stick it in. Add a little bit more to that one. And the flour basically helps the um, biscuits from getting being too sticky and sticking everywhere. So y'all can see it sticking to my hands a little bit. Some of these are gonna be some big, big biscuits. Mm-hmm, yeah, they will be. Put some of your homemade strawberry preserves on them or, or a little bit of, just a little bit of honey on them. That's a big one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, honey would be good. Yeah, usually y'all sometimes we'll cheat and we'll have some homemade, I mean, some canned biscuits from the store. And usually we'll eat one a piece and then the rest of them get thrown to the pigs. But with these biscuits, there's never usually any left over. No. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You can't beat good homemade biscuits or mm -mm. store-bought. <coughs> um, honestly, almost tastes a little like cardboard <laughs> just yeah they do no flavor no yeah they do but you're a good cook the stuff that you cook is really good like the squash casserole and all of those stuff like that i don't do stuff like that i usually like i'm a like a burger or quesadilla or um steak or something like that right you cook the healthy good stuff like good macaroni and cheese and i can't make grits y'all I can't make grits. <laughs> Everybody in this household has told me just like, basically, please don't make grits again. <laughs> and y'all, to me, grits are the easiest thing to make. I cannot and make grits. every time we have grits for breakfast. Um, yeah, the other morning we had uh, grits and liver pudding and scrambled eggs. That was good. Yeah, that was good. All right. So you got a whole thing of biscuits right here. 
Let me just gonna pop them in the oven. Yes, we are. Let me dry my hands good. I don't wanna, I don't wanna burn myself again. All right. So we're gonna cook these for about 20, 25 minutes. Um, just keep a check on it, depending on how your oven cooks. So I'm just gonna set it for 20. It's probably gonna have to go longer than that. So, all right. And while these are cooking, we're gonna go ahead and get um, started on the squash casserole, the green beans, and um, the cube steak. All right, y'all, first off, I didn't realize while I was recording myself, what would we do? What would us men do without our wife? My shirt was on inside out, which in my little fist was over here on the inside of my shirt. And my, wife, my lovely <laughs> wife informed me that my shirt was on the inside out, so I turned it around correctly. All right, so I was gonna show y'all an easy way to open cannon jars, which you can take a take your hand and put down and take a butter knife and pop them up and it does not mess up the edges of your jar lids. So that's the best way to open them. But and do you want to tell our viewers where you got uh, that information? I got that from my grandma. My grandma used to show me all kinds of little tricks and stuff like that. And how I remember that after about probably 30 years is beyond me. But I guess this stuff burns into your memory that's useful. Mm-hmm. So that's something Nana taught him. Mm-hmm. And uh, doesn't, doesn't mess up. The jar lid. Yep. So just a little trick for y'all out there and something from our elders passed on to us. Yeah. All right, so I am going to share with y'all how I make string beans. For some reason, everybody always says I make the best string beans. It sure makes me feel good um, to get that feedback, um, especially from your kids or your family. And um, you can use bacon or fat back or bacon grease, which is really good. I'm gonna put about three because I, I just like the flavor that it gives the beans. So I'm gonna put me three pieces of bacon in here and uh, let that start frying up a little bit, get that uh, bacon grease out of there. And uh, I got my eye turned um, in between medium and high. So go ahead and get that going there. And my jar of string beans. I like to get the juice, whether they're store vault and green beans or the ones that I do here. I straighten them and uh, they're good. Y'all can see we got a sink full of dishes already. So I'm gonna let these sit here for a minute till I get some bacon grease going in there and then I'll come back with y'all on what all I put in my string beans. All right, so I still got my bacon going and I turned my heat down a little bit. And um, so we are starting to prepare our squash for our squash casserole. So the first thing that you wanna do, um, I've got my canned squash, so I'm gonna drain it. Um, we're gonna dice up some onion and um, get that going on the stove top and cook it until it gets tender. All right, so we are frying up some onion for our squash casserole. And uh, you used, what, about a half an onion you chopped up? Yeah. About a half an onion. Hubby always chops the onion for me, y'all. Um, some reason, every single time I chop onion and I can tell it already, it starts making my eyes water so bad. So I'm going to take my squash and I'm going to add it in because we want to get that good and tender, uh, before we put it into the casserole dish and, uh, pop this in the oven. So I'm also going to chop some of this squash up as I go along and it cooks, so. And look at how big this onion is. <laughs> that onion, that's one of the onions that we just got out of the garden. Them things grew good. We can definitely grow onions and yep. weeds. And uh, you can show them. His mom made us a recipe book, y'all. This is so good. She, she put a notebook, good way to organize your recipes. So if y'all are wanting the recipe for this squash casserole, can you fit it in the screen? It's all the way across.
All right, so I have my bacon in there to draw, draw some grease out. And um, I added just a little bit of chicken broth. And I know this sounds crazy, but whenever I do my string beans, I don't think I ever cook them the same way every single time. Um, you know, I try to experiment a little bit here and there with different things, and um, they always seem to come out good. And you can see I've turned my heat back up, and I'm gonna add my string beans in. All right, All right so I've got my string beans strained. I'm gonna dump them in. Stir up all that. Get them in there good. And um, I add salt. And just add to your liking and to your taste. And you can taste it as you go. And add more if you need to. Got some pepper. And a lot of times I like to use crushed um, pepper. Or even um, put a little bit of... Uh, Parsley. Crushed red pepper oh. uh, flakes in it. So, and then I always put some garlic in. Sometimes you even use a cap of vinegar when you make them. Right, and that's how my grandmother used to make them. She always put just a cap full of vinegar, white vinegar, and uh, I put parsley flakes in. And I know this is not healthy because we are down south and that good old southern southern cooking got to add the butter and then um i am also going to add some diced onion just to give it some flavor and um i'm going to put a little top on this so let it uh cook up some and get the string beans good and tender. So I'm gonna leave my top on there like that, let it get a little bit of air to it. The timer on the oven went off. Hubby is going to pull this heavy cast iron out. And look at that, y'all. Mm -mm -mm. Oh my gosh. And there's my plums I told y'all I picked. They're starting to ripen up a little bit more just since I picked them. And um, this is what Hubby was talking about whenever they come out of the oven, while they're still good and hot, you wanna take that butter and just put it all around the tops of the biscuits. And let them get, soak in that mm -hmm. butter. Gives them a good flavor, makes them nice and soft. Right. But y'all can see how good, I mean, they rose and just some nice, good, fluffy biscuits. Mm -hmm. Not what you get in the can at the store. Mm -hmm. Much better. And very easy to make. Okay, so we gave y'all the recipe and um, like I said, I kind of do things a little bit outside of what the recipe says and how to do sometimes and um, just make it quicker and simpler. So I'm adding my salt, my pepper, my butter. My beaten egg. Cup of, uh, half a cup of milk. All right, so I am just gonna mix that right on in the casserole dish. Add 
um, the cheese. And uh, I think it called, how much cheese did it A call? cup of cheese. I don't know, um, how much? <laughs> a cup. A cup, well, <laughs> we, we like cheese around here. Yeah. So, so we, we tend to go a little heavy with the cheese. Yeah, it'll probably get like two cups of cheese or more. <laughs> So I'm gonna mix that in there. And um, my personal preference, anytime I'm making anything like this, y'all, I like the actual block cheese better, so much better than the already shredded cheese. Um, and I like to just grate it myself. Um, I, I like the flavor of that a yep. lot more. Yeah, and um, it melts better. Yeah, it definitely melts better, but just it, it, they're, the flavor is so much better. Yeah. And um, crush up some of these. You're better at this than I am. <laughs> 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 Sorry, y'all. So this is just our easy way of crushing up uh, the Ritz crackers. We just do it in the pack. If you get a little bit of bigger chunks, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I like them like that. I do too. So, and y'all can see you can just spread it out it right works. out of the pack. It's gonna be some good casserole. Mm -hmm. All right, so there's our Ritz crackers, and I think that probably is enough. Yeah. Um, the recipe calls to mix the crackers in, so I'm gonna leave this one up to you tonight. Do you want to mix this in with uh, with it and add more on top? Yeah, I would do that because it actually gives it a better flavor. And with it, it. It actually absorbs the juices inside right. of the casserole and gives you more of a, like a cake-like casserole. Exactly. So, so that's what I was thinking too. I guess two, two great minds think alike. So we're just going to mix um, these crushed up Ritz crackers in. Y'all can hear the grease ready for the cube steak. Maybe mix it a little bit right there. That's already ooey and gooey and looks good though. I know, doesn't it? All right, so I'll put a little bit more crackers on top and a little bit more cheese on top. And we are going to pop this in the oven for how long? I uh, believe uh, 20 minutes. 20 minutes on 350. Yeah. Okay. So y'all can see we we like some cheese around here. And um, hubby's gonna just sprinkle a little bit more of those crackers around the top. And while he's doing that, we give y'all a peek. Mm, look at them string beans, y'all. Looking good. All right, so you just put it in the oven uncovered and uh, 20 minutes. All right, so you need to get started on that cube steak there. Yes, ma'am. All right. All right, so what I've done here, I'm just like her. Every time I make something, I try to make it differently because I, I kind of listen to people when they eat, and like family, and they say like, oh, this is good, or this needs this, or this needs that. So what I've done here is, I've taken two eggs and cracked them in a bowl and added buttermilk this time to it and salt, pepper, and uh, some a little bit of garlic powder. And I figured to try the buttermilk this time instead of regular milk. And then over here, I just have this, some of that Southern biscuit or you can use self-rising flour. So what I'm gonna do is take them and dip them in the egg mixture and then bring them over here and get them floured up really good. Work it in there really good. 
One time I made one time I made these and none of the flour even stuck to it and we was actually eating just plain pieces of meat. Instead yeah. of actually having any flour breading on them and the bread is the best part. Right, right. It's not the same without the breading on it. No. So and you want to make sure that your grease is nice and hot um, before you put it in there. Yeah, my favorite my favorite is to take a piece of cube steak cold and eat it in the morning between white bread for breakfast. Mm. It's actually really good. It's so, good. I'm not sure if a lot of our new, view, new viewers um, have been able to kind of go back and look at some of our previous videos yet. Um, they may have seen some and some may have not. Um, you know, life's so hectic and crazy sometimes to catch up on a lot of things. And um, so in one of our previous videos, I was telling y'all, me and hubby um, basically redid the kitchen. Um, and um, Nana had hired somebody to come out to do the kitchen for and it was just a mess. Um, to a fortune to do it though. Right, right. So what me and hubby did when we first came in and this kitchen since we've been here has been painted about four different colors since yeah. we've been here until we finally just decided um, on what we have now. And I love this color, y'all. It just gives it just such a nice warm feeling. It's just a cool color that gives you just a warm feeling in here. So, um, and y'all have to excuse the mess around, as you can see, because um, we, we're, we're cooking. So, um, anyway, um, this is a built-in area that Hubby made. And, um, unfortunately, y'all can see the microwave does not fit the section that he did previous make um, for the microwave we had. Um, that microwave, we had it, what, less than a year? Yeah. And the fuse blew. So we, we tried, the warranty to go out. right, exactly. Just enough time for the warranty to go out, hubby said. But um, we replaced the fuse, it went out again. And um, so we've just got a little old cheap old um, microwave in there for right now. And unfortunately it doesn't fit the space, but hey, the microwave works, so that's what we're going with. So the cabinets in here, I sanded all those down and repainted all the cabinets. And uh, we did put new appliances in. We have another little built-in area here. Um, we took the dishwasher out. Uh, we wash our dishes by hand here. So um, it's definitely cost efficient yeah, to not run the dishwasher. And um, anyway, so those are the cabinets. Uh, we replaced all the countertops with a wooden countertop. The and... Right, the block style, which I love it. And the island here that we're cooking on, um, Hubby made this. He built this. And um, I guess y'all can see by my home decor, I like old antique um, type things. Um, just very drawn to antique stuff. So... Anyway, anything that looks old or antique-ish. Yeah, and y'all can see so. what a good interior decorator she is. <laughs> she has an eye for color and designs and stuff like that. Everything she does around here is absolutely outstanding, and we don't get nothing but compliments from family and friends on how good things look around here that she does. Just the colors she chooses and the way she chooses to decorate. <coughs> And everything is absolutely beautiful. And so I, I love, I've never had anything like this since I met her. Having such, just everything so fit and finished. I'm blushing now. <laughs> Unbelievable. So I'm going to just kind of show you. Um, from our kitchen, we go into our dining room. And um, when Nana was here, there was like a center in the middle with um, posts going up. So we took that out and widened the opening and uh, we utilized pallet wood around the edges 
to give it an older look. And like I said, y'all, anything antique, we pick up and I love it. So, um, and that piece right there, uh, hubby's cousin built that and I just loved it. So it wasn't the prettiest thing when we first got it, but I sanded it down, redid the top on it and gave it a coat of paint and hubby put the doors with the chicken wire on it. So that's where I keep like my um, special, occasion dishes. special occasion, special occasion dishes, like hubby said, and my Christmas dishes. Y'all can see we went to Krispy Kreme last night, had to have something sweet. So um, anyway, yeah. And um, you know, I like to dabble in um, painting and stuff like that, um, crafts and stuff like that every now and then. So. Hubby made um, me a little tray out of pallet wood, and um, I painted that and found over a period of time that um, I ended up having a talent that I did not know that I had at all. So um, I haven't really had a chance to do a whole lot of painting um, since we've started our farm, but um, you know, when things kind of calm down a little bit, maybe I can get back into that a little bit more. But um, this area here is my favorite. Um, hubby made this bench for me and um, love that, just love it. He did a really, really good job over it. And we actually pick around with everybody because I am so OCD about stuff. It's crazy and it, dri it drives hubby crazy, um, but I, I get something in my mind and picture it a certain way. And so we pick around and tell everybody that that is our divorce bench because we went so back and forth um, over that. But it's a good reminder, you know, even when you don't get along or you're at a point where you just want to wring the other one's neck, something good something good is going to yeah. come out of it and what a beautiful bench he made so it's kind of like our marriage we can ring it ring each other's neck from time to time and uh aggravate each other and uh but at the same time um you know we um got something good yeah. and beautiful out of this relationship so yeah. anyway i guess that's just part of every marriage um <laughs> A love-hate relationship sometimes, yeah. but more love than hate. Yes, definitely. <laughs> All right, just show y'all some of these things frying up. See what they're looking like so far. Hadn't got any out yet. Just getting them nice and golden brown and still got a couple left to do. But I love these. This is one of my favorite meals. So I like to kind of pick up and clean up as I go along whenever I'm cooking and uh, doesn't make such quite a mess at the end. So um, anyway, gonna get some dishes washed up here and just kind of pick up our mess as we go along here. And I am using one of my favorite dish rags, y'all. This is crocheted and it makes the best dish rag ever so that's something that um i haven't learned that skill yet to crochet and uh but my mother-in-law she does um had a great aunt that crocheted and i believe actually this dish rag is one that my great aunt made and um would love to learn that skill to be able to make some afghans and um, the little beanie hats. Yeah. Well, they're not hats, but the toboggans. Yeah. So um, I have quite a few of those that I've confiscated every time your mom makes makes some. I'm like, oh, I like that one. So um, I've got quite a few of those that I, I wear a lot when it gets colder yeah. around here. So um, anyway, I like standing here at my kitchen and I uh, can look out and um, I got such a pretty view of the pond back there. It makes for 
pretty scenery. Um, are you busy? Mm -mm. You want to rent some of these yeah. for me as I come along? So, um, you know, I um, told y'all we took out our dishwasher and uh, saved some money um, running that. But um, I wash my dishes in straight hot water. And um, sometimes I have to let them sit for a few minutes, let them soak. And whenever I do that, it seems like they uh, are easier to wash too. But um, the water gets hot, sometimes too hot to stick your, hands stick your hands in at the time. But you know that your dishes are getting clean and sterile. Yeah. This is something that me and her defer on a little bit. I usually make a big mess cooking and stuff like that and then have a big mess at the end. And that's something she's always done. She's always cleaned up. And she goes a little bit, but really it's nothing but pretty much the supper dishes we eat off of. Right. I think I started doing that at such a young age, though, because one of my chores was washing the dishes every night after we uh, had supper. And uh, my stepdad did a lot of the cooking uh, whenever I was growing up. And he always made the biggest mess um, when he cooked. Now, I'll tell you, he, he could cook, and that's probably where I learned a lot of my being able to cook, especially grits. Yeah. That's where I learned how to cook grits. He showed me how to cook grits. So maybe that's why they're so good, because he could cook now. But um, anyway, this is why I just like to wash and, and clean kind of as I go, because I just remember from childhood that huge mess at the end um, on top of all the dishes as well. It just makes it a lot easier to kind of pick up and clean up as you go along. Yeah. That it does. Makes it a lot easier. Yeah, and so even though, uh, you know, sometimes me and hubby, I'm sure just like with any other married couple, can tend to have our uh, good days and bad days together. But, um, all in all, y'all can see, we make a really, really good team. So, um, and uh, that's the way it should be, you know? We always know that we can rely and depend on each other and uh, it all works out in the end. Yeah, it does. always a lot nicer um, when you have somebody to help you in the kitchen and uh, when he's at work you know I'll come in here and a lot of days try to have supper ready for him when he gets home and uh, that's on a good day yeah. <laughs> that's on a good day yeah I'm gonna let these soak for just a little bit those um, can jars since it had that stuff in it so now basically all we're going to have after we eat is just our supper dishes and just, you know, the couple of things that, um, pots and pans. And, uh, won't have all this mess waiting for us after we get our bellies full. <laughs> so, um, that'll be nice. So, I gotta tell y'all, I always pick on hub hubby every time he cooks. She says I cook enough for Fort Jackson. Yes. We always have plenty of leftovers. And um, what we a lot of times do, because since your sister and your mom and dad are right here, yeah. um, right up the hill, a lot of times we will send them supper. Yeah, that way they don't have to cook. Right, and sometimes they do the same for us too. Yeah. If uh, they cook. Yeah, if they know we're getting out in the field working or something like that during the day or working really hard and haven't had the chance to do nothing, sometimes they'll cook supper for us. 
Yeah, and it's always nice. That's always a nice surprise, too. Mm -hmm. Whenever you come in and you're hot and tired and worked all day outside. And, and I uh, think you want to just cook supper. Right. So um, it works out both ways. It works out really good around here. That's yeah, the good thing about having family so close by. So we've decided we are not going to use the frozen tomato that we try to thaw out for sliced tomatoes with our supper tonight because it's a little mushy and um, probably be better utilized in some type of sauce. You can't have cube steak without gravy in the South. So mm. hubby is going to make us up some gravy to go on top of our cube steak. So he drained out most of the grease from the cube steak and left just a little bit in there and dumped some flour in and gonna get the flour browned up good. And um, gonna yeah. add some milk in there, right? Yeah, add some milk in there. You can use water, but I think milk gives it a better flavor. Oh, definitely, yes. And so. you can't beat, look at this, look at this cast iron. I done fried all that cube steak in here. And then look how clean it is. It's just, you can just wipe the bottom. Once you get a, a, a cast iron pot seasoned really good, it's the best thing you can have. It don't matter about all them fancy ass seen on TV pots and pans and stuff like that. Cast iron is the way to go. Yeah, it really is. It cooks really good. You just, the only thing about cast iron you gotta watch out for is make sure you use the uh, oven mitts because regular pots you can hold on to them but cast iron gets hot. Yeah. And they do make the little slip covers. Yeah. To go over the handles, um, but we just use our oven mitts. I think we have a, like one or two of the little yeah, slips the around slip here. On, yeah, I keep forgetting to dig them out before. Yeah. And never use them. All right, so supper is looking good, and fix and pull the squash casserole out of the oven, and uh, green beans are done. I took them off the burner, and uh, we'll be eating supper here shortly. All right, this is what y'all call a good down home southern homemade biscuit, and some good down home. Southern cooking for sure. So, look at those biscuits. Nice and fluffy. Y'all definitely need to try this recipe. And uh, I hope y'all enjoyed our little cooking adventure, cooking with Mikey and Bill. <laughs> and, um, Hopefully we'll be able to bring y'all some more videos like this too. And, um, you know, we're almost in that season of canning and, um, hopefully I can bring y'all along whenever I'm doing some of my canning this year, since, um, I started doing a little bit last year. I'd love to have y'all with me. So I hope y'all have a great night. Y'all be safe out there and, um, just keep praying and keep prepping y'all and God bless. Y'all come back and see us soon. This is my baby Tucker, and he likes his mama's biscuits. Yeah, you do. All right, let's show everybody your tricks. Sit, good boy. High five, other paw. Good job, buddy. Good job. Speak. <laughs> Speak. <laughs> he is so funny. You are so funny. Yes, you are. All right, lay down. Good boy. Good boy. Is that good? All right, sit up. Good boy. You can clean up the mess. <laughs> you can clean up the mess. Good job. I love this buddy. He is my lucky tucky. Yes, you are. Bumps, I love that kind of cooking.